I welcome you all to Little Sla YouTube channel. In this video on Neoload step by step, we are going to see about the various tabs or the various components of Neoload. If you have used Load Runner, you would have used the various components of Load Runner like ViewGen, Controller, and Analyzer. In Neoload, we have all these three in the same application. Let's see them one by one. First, Design tab. In design tab, we have three different tabs, user path, population, and monitors. In user path, we design the script, we do the parameterization, we do the correlation, we add various logical actions like think time, pacing, and various loopings. To know how to use the think time, loops, and while, and if then else, please find the link in the description. Let's move to the Populations tab. In the Populations tab, we can add the user path in each and every population we distribute them to emulate the real-time scenario. Let's see about these populations in our coming videos. Let's now move to the Monitors tab. This, this monitor page, we can add new monitors like the operating systems of the various operating system monitors, various network monitors, various databases, and various web and EJP tier, APM tools, and various other monitoring softwares. We can also add the various metrics that we require to observe during the load test. Let's see how to do this monitoring in our coming videos. Now let's move to the runtime tab. In this runtime tab, we have these scenarios and under these scenarios, we have these populations, we have the duration policy of the test, we have the load variation policies, and finally we have this load generators. Under this runtime tab, we have this runtime overview tab where we can find the scenario name, the start time of the test, the elapsed time, total requests that have processed so far, total throughput that have been transferred, total errors, total alerts, and total users launched, the average response time of all the requests, the average response time of all the pages, the average request per second, and the average throughput. We can also see the current response time of all the requests. We can see the current response time of the pages. The current request per second. The current throughput. And the current user count. Here we can see the percentage of the tests that have been completed. And here we, have, we can see the amount of CPU 
the amount of memory used for the load generator. Let's now move to the third tab, the runtime graphs. In this runtime graphs, we can observe the real time graph of various metrics like user load, the response time of the busy workers, the average duration or the response times. And next, let's move to the runtime errors. Here we can see the real time errors that we observe during the test. And next, we have this runtime alerts where we can see the alerts that come during the load test. And next, we have the runtime users tab where we can see the number of users that are running in each section and the total number of users and their current action. We can even add the users or we can even remove the users. Let's now move to the results tab. Here we have the test summary. We have the results summary that has the name of the project, the status of the project, the start date, the end date, the duration of the test, and the load policy, the stop policy, and we can see the statistics summary as well, where it shows the total pages, total requests that have been processed, total users launched, total iterations completed, the total throughput, and if there are any errors, we can see it in the total request errors, and if there are any action errors, we can see it here, and also we can see the average pages per second, and the average request per second, we can also see the various graphs the main or the important information we can collect from the transactions link. Once we click the link, we will be taken to the transactions page. And here we can find the minimum response time, the average response time, the maximum response time of each and every transaction, and the number of transactions passed under the count the number of transactions failed under the error column. Let's now move to the values tab. In this tab, we can find or we can observe the individual metrics of each and every individual transactions. And next we have the graphs tab. We can find the metrics of various graphs that we executed during the load test. And next we have the errors tab. Here we can see the errors that have occurred during the load test. And taking note of this and discussing it with the stakeholders and the developers will help us to fix these errors and rerun the execution. Next, we move to the alerts tab. Here we can see the alerts that we have observed during the load test. Alerts are informative and they are not harmful. Next, we have this logs where we can find the various information that we can collect as part of the load test. So these are the three different tabs we have in NeoLoad and these are the various other sub modules we have in the NeoLoad tool. Let's discuss all of these individual tabs in detail in our future videos. Please do share, subscribe and comment your queries in the comment section. 
Thank you everyone for watching this video.